Hello everyone, how you doing? Uh, thought I'd just come on, make a video. That is now how I'm working through things in my head. Been a lot said, hasn't it? Aye. I have to think about stuff and that, you know. Uh, you know, when I first heard about Decker, uh, I was on a billet in prison. And uh, there were decent lads who were talking about him. Uh, and that's when I first heard about Decker and his, some of his issues. And then I was told of proper people from that from up where up that way right or well respected that uh decker had been stitched up that's what i got told you know that that's what happened See, cause when Deca first come on the scene, I didn't jang who he was. I didn't know who he was or not. I'd never heard of Deca or not, but I thought I hadn't heard of uh, Deca. And then I start, then I realised he was from Carlisle, like a diffy, cause I'm a bit slow like that. And I just, and then I started thinking about, about what about him, where he was from, who he was having it with, and stuff like that, you know? So, and that's when my memory was jogged about Decker on that billet landing. I was surrounded with faces, all proper faces on that billet, fighting men, all fighting men, and the all, and the turn. That's when it was discussed about Decker, and it was said then that Decker had been proper stitched up, right? And it was proper unfair what was happening to Decker, right? This was when I was doing my life sentence in my day cat. This is when this conversation took place, right? Now, I've always had that in my head. I've always had that in my head about Decker. Right? And he's always been all right with me. He's always been very humble. You know? Uh, there's no that I can see a bad about Decker. Right? But I think about stuff. Right? And I think about my own stuff. Right? No, I've been through it. You know, and Anna, years ago, what I was like, right? Only because I went to a place called Grendon. And Grendon taught us, made us aware, and taught us loads of things, right, that I was unaware of, you know, like, how your mental state of mind can walk you into situations that you're totally unaware of, that sometimes go up against your principles. I'm not making any excuses, yeah. You know, but how we talk about abusive relationships and what goes on in them relationships is important, you know? And I, before I went to Grendon, right, I was, I was well equipped in walking into abusive relationships one after another for the rest of my life. Yes, that's true. Because you see, there's a lot of things that go on in the lifestyle that, af that affect you, that affect your mental health. And you don't realise the that they affect you. 
you know, that your mental health's under attack and that, and that your issues are coming out. What are these issues? We'll talk about these issues because there are a whole range of issues that because of the lifestyle, right, uh, uh, what what you're tackled with, that, 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 that brings your mental health in a dispute. You know, uh, there's control issues because of the lifestyle that you have within your personal relationships. There's mistrust, there's no, tr there's no trust in your relationships, right? There's control issues. And then boil over, right? there's drugs involved. There's cheating involved. Cheating in the relationship. Then the paranoia comes in. Who's cheating on who? All serious stuff, you know. And you're pushing, you're pushing boundaries that you, you, you never thought you, you don't even realize that you're pushing them. It's naughty, especially when you're a youngin. When you're in your, when you're in your twenties or your late teens, and you're just starting to get into relationships, right? For me. I had all that criminality going on with us, right? Right. I had, you know, I was in a, I was, I was, uh, I had people around us who were shagging each other's birds and all that shit was going on, right? There was loads of madness going on. My head was totally fucked up when it come to relationships, and that, that, I mean, and then you add drugs into the situation. Drugs that make you, I mean, your, your thoughts and all are all, you know, they're all full of mistrust, right? You've got anger issues going on, you've got control issues going on, you've got all them issues going on, then your drugs come into it, and what do drugs do? They make you think, they make you paranoid, they make you more paranoid about stuff, that they fuck your heat up, and when you do that, when you live that lifestyle, jumping from one abusive relationship to the next, in that social setting, in the drug social setting, all shit, all kinds of shit happens. That's part of that fucking whole fucking horribleness that's come from this fucking... <sighs> pushing sexual boundaries. I, I talk about being promiscuous, what does that mean? You know, I keep getting told I see it, see it wrong, but I'm not bothered, right? Because it's what, what does that, what does that mean when you're behaving that way, right? Just on that behaviour alone, what kind of emotional consequences does it have on your relationship? Just on that one behaviour. You know, right, I'm, see I'm out partying and I decide to slag about behind my partner's back, right? So I'm keeping secrets from her, right? I'm living a life where I'm being unfearful to her. And what's that? What what in 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 because of my lifestyle, my criminality. No, we're well, sorry. We'll just keep that away. Just deal with the one issue, the cheating issue. When you break that trust with someone, and you repeatedly sleep with women behind your partner's back, or have relationships with other women behind your partner's back, right? That's that that just just destroys everything. And to be and, and for both for for you know the partner the person who's doing the cheating, right? I was get par starts getting paranoid about the person he's cheating on, or who or who she's cheating on. 
you know and it's it starts that vicious circle doesn't it and he's a both in a relationship two people in a relationship where they both think they're cheating on each other all because one's been sleeping about and it gets it it can get to the stage where because one's been sleeping about the other one starts sleeping about then the veiling starts. Then the one, the, if it's a male, the veiling starts from the male, even though he's been the one who's been cheating first. It's all warped and fucked up, man. Right? And you've got that kind of on, just on its own. Right? And then you have the impact of the like criminal lifestyle. See, so you're drug dealing, you're selling coke, whatever. Fuck. Got a bit of money around you, plenty of coke. The coke parties. Mm. But you're mixed up in all that sort of lifestyle. Coke parties. How are you? What happens at these coke parties and all that? What sort of sexual boundaries and all that get pushed? Loads, man. I've never been to them personally. Uh, this was, you know, but I know what happens. It is what it is, man. You start, you start, you start taking coke, you're drug dealing. Oh, see, you're more like me, where I can out and rob, steal cars, burgle, you know, look for robberies today. You know what I mean? Gang run committing fucking craziness on the street to keep people terrified and all that fucking shit. I had no trust in my life at all. That had a detrimental effect, right? In every relationship that I, for the future, for the rest of my life, I was going to carry on having one abusive relationship after another, right? Cheating on me partner, doing the lifestyle, me partner cheating on me, me going off me heed. Fucking that life, that, that fucking vicious circle of not being able to have a proper life, a proper relationship because I take all my baggage into my relationship, all my distrust, all my cheating, everything, my criminality, the whole lot, I bring that into my relationship. Don't matter who I'm having a relationship with, she can be, she could be the best mentally strong, nerd, all woman and in a wooden work. Not alone when you got into a relationship and told people of similar character in that in that lifestyle. Yeah. Loads of criminal lassies from Mount Wars who think in a criminal way and they end up in abusive relationships that they kinda of get out of and all that. Loads, loads. That end up having kids and bringing up kids who end up criminals. That's common round us. That's part of the social structure. You just the, these generations and all that. The generation up and me, like my generation, uh, I didn't grow up with drugs and classier drugs and all that. You know it was you know so like. My generations, the the parents of the kid, of the youngins know in the in the teenagers and all that running on now, right? And if we're all fucking stoned on cocaine and 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 drinking all the time and taking heroin and and all that lifestyle and all that, right? What's them kids gonna be like? And that guy exists in our society, all that fucking that stuff, you know. There are a lot of things about how we walk blindly, right? And create situations into situations that we create ourselves that we're totally unaware of the naughty boundaries we are pushing. And one naughty boundary is 
control in a relationship. Exerting your control in your personal relationships. Yes. And if you, can you imagine? I mean, you've got to feel secure in your relationship, right? So if you feel, you, you know, if you're very insecure about everything, right? You've got a lot of issues going on. You're insecure because of the lifestyle that you're leading. Right? And the kinds of conversations and relationships you're having around you. I just think right that to talk about abusive relationships right is important in understanding how the lifestyle and how we carry our baggage into them relationships right and then how we can either we can destroy we destroy our own lives and we destroy other people's lives when we do it. I think we've got to own what shit, even if it's fucking embarrassing. You know what I mean? embarrassing shit you know you grow up in, a, in an environment where there's just fucking social structure it's just so fucked up we should talk about that start talking about the the real issues around around how a social structure wrapped up in criminality, right, and drugs and all that is manifested in a but phew. There's a lot of there's a lot of kind of there's a lot of responsibility that everybody has to take, you know, around these issues like personal responsibility, like how do I take personal responsibility within my relationship? You know, because I've got to feel secure. I can't just give everything over. I've got to feel secure in that relationship as well. So I have to, I have to, you know, because still sometimes I, I get stuff that come into me here and the fucking, you know, whoa. But I know it's from my past. You know, if you think your bird's cheating on you and stuff like that, it's crazy. You know, I, I, I didn't entertain folks like that. I didn't entertain folks like that. The way I look at that. Right, is why well, I bring that into the that kind of thought into my relationship, right? When it now it's like that's happened, you know what I mean? Now it's like that's happened, so if it is, then I'll deal with it then, and I'll stress about it then. But up until that point, I'm not going to bring that baggage into my relationship. You know? And that's the way I deal with it. That's why none of that shit and I don't get none of that rent none of that in my heat. I might have a fleeting fault that fucking but it's just bollocks. There's no reason for it to be there, it's just crap. But it's took us a while to get into things, yeah. This is going on in this video. 
but I'm going to make more. But I just got to say that talking about abusive relationships, I'm up for talking about that, right? Uh, oh, I, because Pad made a video, right? Listen, Pad. <sighs> See, it's fucking a lot going on, yeah? Listen, you have to accept, right, that when I talk about what happened, right, in Durham Jail Hospital, right, and what happened, right, at Davy Glover's front door, where I nearly got shot and Davy nearly got shot, deed, right, is actually true, right, it's true. You can't, listen man, this, this is true. And you're asking me to get on lie detector tests and prove that. Oh, listen, you, listen. You can call me whatever ye want, mate. Right? Ye just crack on. Right? Do what you want with me. Do what you want with me, mate. But I've told the truth. I've told the truth. Right? On this issue. On all issues. That he'll accept if I do a lie detector test on that and that issue and that issue. Listen, more kid. It's not happening, man. You're not dictating terms with me, man, you divvy. Sorry, me language. I take that back. It's because you think I'm a divvy. Listen. I've told no lies on all issues, right? And the fact is, right? You cannot take that away from me. You cannot take my truth away because it's the truth. End of, mate. If you, I will come back up that form and sit in that shed with you. Aye. Aye. And I will do lives with you. Yes, I will. Aye. But you'll have to make a public apology, a public apology to me for these allegations that you've made. And until that happens, nothing's coming from me. I'm sorry, I've got a bit of feeling there, but I feel strong about this. It's not happening. Nobody's dictating terms to me. Paul, listen, I went up that farm. Right, two occasions. Two. You didn't want to talk about it the first time. When we're in the caravan. The second time in the shed. No, I've not said anything about the conversations me and you talked about. Right, them are private conversations and then we'll stay private conversations. And I've got absolutely nothing to say about you personally. I have no plans coming on YouTube, right, and getting involved, right, in a tit for tat. Ye done this, ye done that, ye done this, ye done that. With no fucking evidence coming up. With who's done fucking what. Right? I'm not into that. Aye. I'll talk about abusive relationships and all that with you. Talk about controlling issues. I'll talk about all that with you. I'll talk about all the re all the, all the reoffending stuff. And how to get your head on having a healthy relationship. Without all the criminality and the... The fucking sex shit and the fucking crap. Destroying every relationship whatever I have. That doesn't go on in my life anymore. That stopped. That stopped when I went to prison for a life sentence. Grinding that you see turn me into the grass. Saved my life, man.
stop me from being manipulated by people. I don't need anybody. I can work my own shit out. I'm a young person, I can look after my own mental health. And you never ever get to the point where I can't, where I, where I need help. I will go and get help. I won't sit and suffer, that's for sure. I've seen the consequences of that. Well, that's all I've got to say about now.